I just want to say one word to you. Just one word. Yes, sir. Are you listening? Yes, I am. Plastics. That advice to Dustin Hoffman in The Graduate foretold a future of this, all of it. Now it's all piling up on land and swamping our seas, mountains of trash, with no end in sight. Our cover story is from Yahoo Tech columnist David Pogue. In the 1950s, a new material burst onto the scene that would change the world forever. The ingenious alchemy of coal and oil provides the material. Ingenious machinery presses and stamps and molds the material into a wide variety of products. Yes, it was plastic. Cheap, durable, sanitary, strong, and light. So how many raw categories of plastics are there? Oh, wow. Literally thousands. Wow. Because Fred Betke is the founder of Delta Pacific Products, which makes plastic parts for medical instruments. Okay, so welcome to the factory. Thank you. We're all ready to serve cafeteria lunches now. That's right. <laughs> Almost everything plastic starts out as pellets. They come in every color under the sun, which is why Betke keeps them carefully in separate boxes. So what do you pay me not to dump some of this in? Please don't do that. <laughs> Delta Pacific's clients specify the exact design of the parts they want. Here, hot plastic gets injected into this heavy steel mold. Later, it comes out as something like this. After 65 years of making plastic, we've pretty much mastered the art. What we haven't yet figured out is what to do with plastic once we're done with it. It lasts a really long time. It doesn't <laughs> biodegrade, so it just sits there. Roland Geyer, professor of environmental science at UC Santa Barbara, has studied how much plastic we throw away. We have statistics reaching all the way back to the dawn of plastic mass production, 1950, and if we add it all together, it's 8.3 billion metric tons. <laughs> so if, if we take that and spread it out evenly over California, <laughs> the entire state of California would be covered. And uh, that would be an ugly sight. About 70% of our discarded plastic winds up in open dumps or landfills like this one. So plastic bag, probably used once between the cash register and the car. And then how long will it be here in the landfill? It will be with us for hundreds of years. But some plastic winds up in an even worse place, the ocean. Every single year, somewhere between 5 and 12 million metric tons of plastic waste enters the ocean. Plastic in the ocean has a tendency to break down into ever smaller pieces. And these tiny pieces then get taken up even lower down in the food chain. So we know that um, it ends up on our dinner plates. There's plastic in my food? There is plastic in your food, plastic in your sea salt, and there is plastic coming out of your tab. In fact, at this rate, the World Economic Forum predicts that by 2050, our oceans will contain more plastic than fish. But wait a minute. Don't most people recycle plastic? Not exactly. Geyer says that as of 2017, the world recycles only about 9% of all our plastic. Even if you're good about using your recycling bin, your plastic may never actually get recycled. Its first stop is a material recovery facility where metal, glass, paper, and plastic get sorted. We sort everything. So we will sort hangers, we'll sort plastic film, we will sort soda bottles, pill bottles, and make individual bales of each plastic. Ah, okay. And Sunil Bagaria is the co-founder of GDB International, a corporate recycling facility in New Jersey. Then it is going to another factory, which is then washing it, grinding it, pelletizing it. Then from there it will go to another company which will make another product or maybe blowing another bottle. It's easy and economical to recycle clean, pure plastic. But well over half the plastic we throw in our bins is contaminated by food or paper labels or other materials. For 30 years, we've had an easy solution for disposing of that dirty plastic. And what is the role of China in all of this? Ah, that is the million dollar question. <laughs> China was buying 50% of all plastic scrap in the world. That continued for say 20, 30 years. 
And then there was a, I think, a movie made by somebody. Plastic China. Plastic China. The 2017 documentary Plastic China illustrated the brutal truth about the contaminated plastic that developed nations were selling to China. It showed a desperately poor Chinese family eking out a living by hand sorting these mountains of plastic trash. So the Chinese government, the Communist Party is waking up and saying, what, why, why are we doing this? There's some, some national pride. We, yes, we do yes. want to be the world's dumping ground. Yes. So the Chinese government announced a new policy. Starting on January 1st this year, China stopped accepting other countries' plastic, unless it's impossibly pure. If you are sending any scrap, it should not have 0.5, more than 0.5% of foreign matter. It's got to be at least 99.5% pure. pure plastic. Yeah. And then that was obviously unattainable. In his plant, Bagaria showed me why. So right here, you have like four or five different types of plastic. A lot of plastic comes to recyclers like Bagaria all mixed together, impossible to separate cost-effectively. So what happens now to the plastic we used to ship to China? Not much. A lot of it's just piling up here in the States. We still have large volumes of the types of plastic that nobody will buy sitting, waiting for somebody to buy them. Clay Warner is the recycling manager at Garten Services in Salem, Oregon. And then you have to decide how long you're going to hold on to it before you end up throwing it away. The town had to ask the public to stop putting certain plastic types into their recycling bins. Uh, first initial reaction from the public was outrage. What do you mean we can't recycle these plastics? Meanwhile, smaller recycling centers are simply going out of business. If you were selling it to China, there was some revenue coming. Now if you're sending it to landfill, sending it to landfill costs money. So not only now you're not earning, now you're paying to get rid of it. Oh. Still, Roland Geyer points out that we have overcome environmental nightmares before. We banned leaded gasoline. We managed to tackle ozone depletion. So I think humankind has a long history of creating big environmental problems, but I think we're also starting to have a track record of solving environmental problems. Some larger facilities, like Sunil Bagaria's, have decided to process the contaminated plastic themselves. Earlier we were making money by selling it to China. Now we are making more money by keeping this here, sorting it, and making plastic pellets out of it. This China problem is a blessing in disguise. In the big picture, though, it will take effort from every stakeholder to fix the plastics problem. Recycler Clay Warner says that government should play a part. I do think, in my own opinion, that um, we do need to ban certain plastics and packaging. Sunil Bagaria says that corporations play a part. It's like, like McDonald's. They have announced that by 2025, all our packaging will be made from recycled plastic. And plastic parts maker Fred Becky says that plastic manufacturers themselves play a part. Yes, the industry is trying to address it. Polymers are being developed that, as you know, the knives and spoons and forks that we see in some of the fast foods, they've gone to those polymers, which are biodegradable. It has to happen. I mean, this is all we've got, right? So Yeah, that's right. We cannot imagine life without plastics, but we cannot continue to lead our life the way we are. It's not like, oh, let's use this planet Earth then we will move to another planet. This is what we have. We need to take care of this.